Hi, I'm Frank Kane of Sundog Education. Are you curious about how deep learning and artificial intelligence works? Well, the basic concepts are surprisingly simple. Keep watching and you'll understand it in just five minutes. Deep learning is all about artificial neural networks, which is inspired by how your brain works. Let's go inside your head and see what's going on. Inside your brain are billions of neurons or nerve cells. Every neuron is connected to many other neurons and fires off electrical signals between them. Once a neuron receives enough of a signal from the neurons it's connected to, it will fire off a signal to other neurons in turn. It's those connections that make up the programming of your brain. The strength of those connections can change as your brain learns, controlling how much that particular connection contributes to a neuron's decision to fire or not. Connections can be broken and new connections formed. Together, these connections between neurons and the strength of those connections make up your own neural network. Ultimately, that neural network inside your head is what determines your response to the input signals received by your brain, what you see, hear, smell, taste, and feel. We think neurons in your neocortex are arranged into cortical columns or bundles of nerves that work together in parallel. So fundamentally, your brain consists of neurons that behave in a fairly simple manner individually operating in parallel and passing their computations on to other neurons. In a happy coincidence, this is exactly how the video card inside your gaming PC works, and the same computing hardware that lets you play Call of Duty can be used to simulate how brains work at a rough level. This is what really enabled deep learning and artificial intelligence to take off. So how do we apply these ideas to artificial neural networks? Well, first we have to define a problem into terms that fit this model. Let's take facial recognition as an example. Fundamentally, this is what we call a classification problem. We take features of the face, for example, the pixels that make up an image of the iris and the distance between facial features, and try to classify this facial image into a specific person. So the inputs to our artificial neural network might be those pixel values and distances, and the output would be some number that tells you who this person is. So our artificial neural network starts with those inputs, and our first layer of artificial neurons assigns weights to each input signal. Maybe some facial features are more important than others. There's also a bias neuron that just lets us add in some constant value to that layer's weights. You can think of those weights and biases as being similar to the strength of connections between the neurons in your head. Next, we introduce another layer of neurons. Like real neurons, they add up all the signals coming in from the neurons in the layer below them, which have different weights associated with them. We then apply what's called an activation function, represented by this little graph, that decides whether to fire off an output signal to the next layer of neurons, and if so, how strong that signal should be. We also have a bias term associated with this layer as well. This middle layer might then feed into another layer that starts to consolidate things down, and ultimately, some final function might be applied to translate the output of our artificial neural network to a final answer, the classification result we're after, such as who this person is that we're looking at. So again, we start with a set of inputs, which represent the information we have that we want to make some sort of decision based on. Those input signals get fed into one or more layers that are all interconnected with various weights between them, where every neuron is adding up the signals coming into them and using them to decide what signal to send out, if any. These layers of neurons between the input and output layers are called hidden layers. And as long as you have more than one hidden layer, we can call this system deep learning. The deep in deep learning just refers to the depth of this network. What's really important is what all those weights and biases are between each neuron in the network. It's those weights between the connections that dictate how the neural network works. And as you can see, there are a lot of connections, each with their own weight. That's the hard part of making a deep learning network. You need to train your little artificial brain with real data so it can learn what the right weights and biases are to solve some specific problem. Those weights are learned using a process called gradient descent. The details are too much to cover in five minutes, but basically we hand our neural network a set of data where the answer is known ahead of time, such as who a given person in an image is and run that network backwards repeatedly, allowing it to experiment with different connection weights and adjust them over time to improve its ability to predict the correct answers. Just like with a real brain, practice makes perfect. 
we tell our network, this is a picture of Anne, and it just keeps trying different weights until it arrives at a set that does a good job of predicting Anne when given an image of her face. Gradient descent is the technique by which it does this intelligently, finding changes in weights that yield better results and taking those changes further until we get the best results. And there you have it, deep learning explained in just five minutes. Of course, we've only scratched the surface here. Real neural networks are much more complicated and designing them and preparing the data for training takes considerable skill and experience. If you'd like to dive deeper and start your journey into a career of machine learning, check out our online course called Machine Learning Data Science and Deep Learning with Python at sundog-education.com. 200,000 students around the world have used its 15 hours of online video to dive more deeply into this field, and I hope you will too. And of course, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.